So when um, Dr. Halen said that he needed the people, Dr. King was sitting there, and I was just a couple rows from him. And he just looked at me, and he said, young lady, will you go? And looked like everything in here started ticking, and I said yes. And that's when I began to do it. I wanted to go to the rallies. I think I attended most all of them. And I was stopped so many times on my way home. The policeman said, do you have any weapons? I said, no. So he goes in the trunk, had me to open the trunk, and he got the lug wrench that you change the tire with. He says, you do have weapons. So he said, I could take you to jail for this. You know, doing all of this, I never went to jail. I said I wasn't going anymore. And I said that all through the movement. When things would happen, I said, this is my last night. But I couldn't stay home because that was the first time that I felt that there would be a change. I felt it, that there would be a change if we continue. So I wanted to be one of the ones that would make a difference. So I went. Now my grandmother on my mother's side, she was horrified. She said, why don't they stop? They're not going to get these things that they want. They're not, the white people are not going to let them eat with them. And I said, we don't want to eat with them. We want to be allowed to go into the restaurant and order our dinner like anybody else. That's all we want. And she says, well, you just better stop. You're going to get yourself killed. And she would tell me frightening stories of her days where they would go to black homes and pull a black man out, and you see him hanging on the tree the next time. So she has had a, a, an experience that I, I didn't know about, you know. And she just couldn't believe that there would be a better day. The foot soldiers were the people who marched and took part into the struggle that we had here in St. Augustine. Well, when the uh, Civil Rights Act of 1964 was signed, they, the people stayed here a little while, and they left. So we were here almost high and dry. I, daily, I would look at those people who had lost their jobs and had kids to feed, and whatnot. Some of the people never looked the same to me. They, you know, they just felt drained, looked drained. And it just kept rolling and rolling over in my head. Something should be done to recognize these people. When I wanted to do the monument, I talked to different people. They said, well, maybe the city would go along with you if it's Dr. King. Maybe you could put Dr. King. I said, but it's not about Dr. King. It's about the little people who made Dr. King. And I just kept thinking about it and thinking about it. And my grandson says, well, when are you going to stop? When are you going to leave it alone? And I said, when I get that monument downtown in the plaza, it'll be over for me. So I um, called in several people and organized a group. And our first donation was $7. And we, we did it. And Nina Vreeland, she came through so generous. She gave me $20,000. And when she did that, it looked like people started kicking in and figured, well, this is a worthwhile cause. Because she didn't know whether we were going to get there, or continue, or what. But um, we did. You think it's over? No way. Mm -mm. No, I mean, you feel bad if you don't do what you can do. Now, if it was something impossible, or uh, couldn't do this, and then at my age, I need to go sit down, but I, I just feel like I need to help any way I can.